Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you out to our Christmas play this evening. We are glad to see so many people out tonight. Uh, it's been a fun uh, couple of months practicing and working together for this play. I uh, want to thank a lot of people. You know, um, Gina has put a lot of time into directing this year and a lot of others that have been behind the scenes. And I want to say thank you to you parents and grandparents and other people who have supported us through this and taken the time to bring your young people here so that we could have this play. Um, after the Christmas play, we're having refreshments in the fellowship hall and want to invite everyone to join us. But as we uh, center ourselves for just a moment, join with me in our bulletin for our responsive reading. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. To order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. As we are here tonight, we must remember that the reason that we are here is because of Jesus and his birth. And so we celebrate that tonight. And without further ado, I welcome you to tonight's presentation of Two Nights Before Christmas.
wonderful time of the whole year. And it's almost here, isn't it? You'll find Mom busy in the kitchen concocting all kinds of incredible edibles, while Dad fidgets in nervous anticipation of all the bills arriving in January. And the kids, they just walk around with big fat grins on their faces because it's December 23rd and Christmas is almost here. None of us can go very far in any direction without running smack dab into Christmas. We see it in the magical array of lights. We touch it in the holly decorations, and we even hear it in the music pipe through all the stores and shops. Yet perhaps the most charming of all the season's reminders are those which come to us through the courtesy of a man dressed in a gray suit with a large sack on his back, while he visits your home and mine more times in one year than any other person. And by now you all know who I'm talking about, don't you? He's the mailman. Mine brought this card the other day, and inside it seemed to have an old familiar ring to it. Here, let me read it to you and see what you think. Two nights before Christmas and all through the store, a quiet hush settled over the floor. The toys which remained were all on the shelves, awaiting the moment the clock would strike 12. With the shoppers gone home and the owner departed, it gave the appearance the holiday started. Well, started for most, I guess you might say, because old Mr. McDuff didn't feel much that way. Bah, Christmas. Absolutely the worst time of the entire year. Each one starts earlier and earlier and ends later than the one before. Why my crazy neighbor doesn't even take down his Christmas decorations. You wait and see. Next year, they'll be marching to Jingle Bells on the 4th of July. <laughs> Look at this mess. Everybody pushing and shoving like a bunch of crazy people. I tell you, I'm sure glad, be glad when it's all over. Just makes double work for me. I am so tired right now that I can't even think straight. I think I'll just sit down and rest these tired old bones for a spell. Just for a spell.
the Sam Hill is going on. Who are you? I mean, what are you? Hello, Mr. McDuff. You might not know who we are, but we toys all know you. We've watched you as you clean our store every night. Let me introduce myself, McDuff. My name is Ruby R. Robot. Ruby R. Robot? Can this really be happening? This is Annie the Ballerina doll. Good evening, sir. This is Wilma Ryder. Hey, that's wow, Wilma Ryder, sir. But you can call me Wilma. Uh, um, thanks, w Wilma. This is Bono the Clown. Bono, at your service, sir. Always good for a laugh. Always good for a laugh. Oh, excuse me. This is Duck. Hey, Wilma, want to buy a duck? A what? A duck! Does it quack? Of course it quacks. Hey, Annie, want to buy a duck? A what? A duck! Does it quack? Does it quack? Of course it quacks. Of course it quacks. Want to buy a duck? A what? A what? A what? A duck? Does it? No, 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 I don't want to buy a duck. Not that duck or any duck. Come on, you toys. We better stop joking around. Mr. McDuff may be the only chance we have to talk to somebody who's real. Right on, Annie. Come on, everybody. Let's get your wheels on. Go ahead, Annie. You do the talking. You dolls have a better way with words than we do. No! Thanks a lot, duck. Hey, Annie, what about a duck? Well, anyway, sir, it's like this. We all know it's Christmas. Any toy in its red box knows it's Christmas. But what we don't know is why it's Christmas. You see, Mr. McDuffie, none of us are real. Now, we may look real, we may talk real, we may act like we're real, but we are not real. Believe me. But you were real, Mr. McDuff, and Christmas was made for people like you. So please, couldn't you just take a few minutes of your time to explain the reason for all these celebrations? Nah, you've come to the wrong person, Annie. For one thing, I really don't know much about Christmas. And for another thing, I don't much care. Christmas don't mean much to me. It's not nice as it used to be. The shoppers are more grumpy and the decorations dumpy. Not as nice as they used to be. You ask me to describe what Christmas is to me. Well, it's one big catastrophe. Oh, Christmas don't mean much to me. It's not nice as it used to be. Aunt Lizzie's in a tizzy, Uncle Frank's in so much misery, nothing's cheap like it used to be. You ask me to describe what Christmas is to me, it's one big catastrophe.
Locked in my memory compartment is the information of a lady buying a book called The Real Story of Christmas. Perhaps there's one more in stock. I'll go get one. Cool your jets there, Ruby. I'll get the book. book. You robots have some good memories, but you're not swift at moving. Here you go, Mr. McDuffie, sir. Would you please do us the honor? Well, all right. I guess I could just for a little while. And mind you, just for a little while. Let's see now. I guess the story starts here. And it came to pass in those days, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one in his own city. And Joseph went. Whoa, Mr. McDuffie, sir. Now before you go cruising any further, could you kindly give us that line one more time? Yes, all that about Caesar raising taxes and all this and stuff, I'm not sure I understand. It is easy to understand in those days. People return to their hometown to sign in. If you please, such a colossal waste of time. Such information would be stored in a wonderful and efficient computer like me, like me, like me. Excuse her, Mr. McDuff. She gets stuck sometimes. Go on, Mr. McDuff. Can we read some more? And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. Then Herod sent them to Bethlehem. And when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child lay. No, no, Wilma, Wilma. 
I think you've got the wrong picture. Back in those days, people traveled by camelback. 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 You mean hatchback. No, Wilma, I'm afraid I mean camelback. Oh, my shops. Oh, my aching shops. Well, neither have I, duck. Let's see what else is happening. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day, in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. What's a manger, mister? Well, as far as I know, duck, it's nothing more than a rugged wooden trough where they put food and hay for all the animals. I guess it was the only bed available. You mean that baby was born a king, and yet all they had for his bed was a box of straw? Getting to be quite the story. Here, let me read the rest. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men.
termination of the story picked up? No, Ruby. In fact, I think it's all just the beginning, at least for me. How do you mean, Mr. McDuff? Well, Annie, all these years I've been looking for Christmas. And tonight, for the first time, I think I've found it. You see, I've always looked for it in people, in presents, and all that stuff. And then when I didn't find it, I decided not to care. Now I understand that Christmas was there all the time in those tiny strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Jesus wasn't born to give the world a big celebration. He was born so that we could know peace and forgiveness. He was born for me. Oh my goodness, it's one o'clock. I must have fallen asleep. Uh, of course, I, I fell asleep. And there you are, each toy in your original place. Where else would you be? All I can say is I'm sure glad that I had that dream. Because my life will never be the same. Oh, how did this book get here. I better put that back. Well, goodbye. And again, thank you, you crazy toys. Thank you for helping me find out what Christmas truly means.
they could all hear his whistle as his cares flew away like the down of a thistle. And they heard him exclaim as he walked out of sight, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you guys for being here and supporting us. Thank you for each of you who have taken part in this play this year. It has been an awesome time together. I'm going to have a moment of prayer and then uh, let you guys go down and we invite you to refreshments in the fellowship hall. And once again, thank you for people making this happen because when we come together like this, Things don't always go perfect, but it reminds us that Jesus is a part of our lives, and that's what this is all about. So let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for these young people who have dedicated this time to telling your story, the greatest story ever told. We thank you for parents and grandparents and loved ones who have seen that they got here each week. We ask that you bless all of us who are here this evening. We ask that you bless the food that is set before us tonight that we might enjoy this time of fellowship. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Just one announcement before everybody leaves. I don't think I'll need that. Oh, I do. Just a special thanks to Gina because she's taken the hours and the time to come up here and do this play every Saturday with these kids. And dealing with kids, as you know, is not always the easiest. So if everybody will give Gina a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Take a bow, everybody. Oh. Yeah.